I recognize that, you know, parental consent is a big deal, but when I'm doing anything LGBT, I don't worry about that. Let's be honest, it's an electronic permission slip. You type in a parent's name and I'm like, oh, that parent signed consent. There's no actual yeah. signature. Well, you heard that right. That was one of the top leaders at a National Association of School Psychologists bragging about circumventing parents. According to internal materials obtained by the press, she has been participating in internal messaging boards for a group called Pride Liberation Project, which is helping confidentially rehome gay students. And here's just one example under the resources for outed students section. It says, in the event of you needing to leave your home, we can provide you with emergency housing from a support of queer friendly adult. They also offer to provide false documentation to hide students' whereabouts while they're participating in gay activities. Joining me now is the president of Parents Defending Education, Nicole Neely, who has been fighting to reclaim schools. Nicole, when I came across this story, I mean, this is unbelievable. This is someone who is at the top of uh, our children's psychology for school associations talking this way. You know, you're in a grassroots uh, project helping parents. Do you see this as a problem? Is this really where we're headed right now? Unfortunately, yes. We hear tips from across the country of districts that are regularly hiding information from parents about children's gender identities. Um, children are being encouraged by people like this woman, who is a guidance counselor in Arlington, Virginia High School, to keep secrets from their parents. We, as parents, tell our children from a very young age, you don't keep secrets from mom and dad. We do it to keep our children safe. And yet we have people who are being paid with our tax dollars telling our children that mom and dad are evil, mom and dad are bad, don't trust them, trust us at the schools, which is deeply concerning because it's destroying that relationship between a parent and child. This guidance counselor is not going to be around when my child graduates, but I will. It's unbelievable because ultimately you should be getting the parent involved in a situation, but the, the key here is they don't trust the parent at all. They don't bring them into the fold, into the conversation. That same woman um, who is pushing to rehome children, she is also sharing her own sexuality and dating experience with them. Um, listen to this. I do love my neuro and gender diverse <laughs> kids. Those are like my favorite. I identify as queer, but I'm attracted to a very small but growing percentage of the population. Mm. And so more trans masculine, non binary folks who, you know, may or may not like women. When I'm dating more trans masculine people, one of the first things I ask, or even when I go out with them, is how out are you and where are you out as, which is the same thing I ask my students. Which is the same thing I ask my students. Why is a guidance counselor talking to their students about their sexuality? I mean, where are we now where this is a normal conversation? Sadly, it's happening all the time and at increasingly young ages. That's why we saw people like Governor DeSantis so viciously savaged by the mainstream media, because the vast majority of parents don't want these conversations to be taking place in schools with their very young children. You know, the most frequent feedback that we heard from families when they actually realized what was in Governor DeSantis's Parental Rights and Education Act was, why did it cut off at third grade? Why are, why are fourth graders, fifth graders, sixth graders having these kinds of explicit sexual conversations at school? It's not appropriate for any adult to be talking to small children about things like this. Straight, gay, non-binary, et cetera. We want our children to learn. Let's think about the amount of learning loss that our children have experienced over the past two years of COVID. These are not being made up because our children are being exposed to identity politics and social justice activism in the classroom by people like this. It's a betrayal of our trust. Yeah, you talk about standards. The Wall Street Journal was revealing the shocking report cards in Illinois. Um, I want to pull up a full screen, but they're ultimately pointing out in Decatur, which is outside of Chicago, only 2% of black third graders are regarded at their reading level for their school and only 1% for their math level for their grade. Okay, so that's where their students are at. But you look at the teachers in that same county in Decatur, 97% of them were rated as excellent. I mean, what has happened when it seems like there's no weight anymore on the success of the student? Right. There are no consequences for these teachers for failing their children. I mean, 
we have a lost generation of students as a result of these school shutdowns, children who just didn't show up for months or years, who fell through the cracks. And let's remember the same people who have been screaming equity from the rooftops for the past several years as a reason to get rid of gifted and talented programs, as a reason to hold back the high performers to or to get rid of standards altogether for minority students. I mean, in Oregon, implying that BIPOC students can't graduate, so we're going to get rid of graduation requirements entirely. They are the ones who have disproportionately hurt minority students through these closures and through these equity programs. It is shameful. And the fact that these teachers are getting good you know, scores, passing grades, shows just how absolutely garbage all of these statistics are. Parents know that our children suffered during COVID. And the fact that mm. these schools are continue to pretend that they didn't is sick. Nicole, don't have much time left, but we're wrapping up this series. What is your one piece of advice to parents, especially as we see this happening younger and younger to our children? Um, in 30 seconds, what is one thing you say parents really need to look out for or do to protect their kids? Sure. I mean, we tell parents the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. You know your child better than anybody. The traditional gatekeepers, the school board associations, the unions, the, the, the PTAs, they don't care about your children. They don't have their best interest at heart. You do. So you see something, say something. Pass an anonymous tip to us because sunshine is the best disinfectant. And when you find something bad at a school district, when it's outed, they'll often change their policy. So you can and you will make a difference. Mm, transparency is the key here. Nicole Neely, thank you for the time this evening.